The LA Clippers returned home after their six-game Grammy road trip, and it was a special kind of regular season game. But for the Dallas Mavericks, the debut of Kyrie Irving, and the Clippers played them with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and did not come up with the win. What went wrong in this one? And with the trade deadline approaching on Thursday, what moves did the Clippers need to make to get the best version of this roster heading towards the home stretch? Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Clippers. Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. Your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Viziri, in my 18th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for more Clipper content. The Clippers. By the way, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner for Locked On because the number one sports book in America. That's FanDuel. For the Clippers, going to be talking about why they did not come up with the win in this homecoming game against the Dallas Mavericks and Kyrie Irving's debut as a Maverick. No Luka Doncic. But for the Clippers, everybody was healthy. No John Wall, who I think has played, it seems like, and Mark Stein reported during the game, has probably played his last game as a Clipper. And going on the subject of that, going to be talking about the trade deadline. It is on Thursday. What moves do the Clippers need to make? So let's get right into it. The Clippers lost this game to the Dallas Mavericks 110-104, to a game in which they trailed for the entire game, basically. They had, I want to say, two good quarters, the second and the third, but it seems like the only quarter the Clippers have consistently played well in this season has been the third quarter. I know it's not easy in a basketball game, to put together four good quarters or four even decent quarters of basketball. But the great teams do it more often than the other teams. And the Clippers, you know, less than maybe five games have they been able to do that this season and much fewer against solid opposition. One of those games being against Dallas, in my opinion, the last time we played them at Staples Center. And I was at this game on Wednesday night. It was a pretty good atmosphere, I want to say, especially in the second half for the Clippers. You know, they came out with a pretty poor first quarter against the Nets. Norman Powell and Reggie Jackson were scoring the ball at the end of that first quarter. And they were playing, you know, we were playing against the Nets team that was pretty depleted. Against the Mavs, yeah, Kyrie Irving definitely makes them a better team and absolutely demanded his attention throughout the game. He showed very quickly that he was not going to be stopped. And we started double-teaming him, blitzing him, hedging hard on the screens throughout the game. But it was the second consecutive game where, in my opinion, the starting lineup, their urgency was a little bit lacking compared to the Mavericks or the opposition. Dallas was moving the ball faster. You know, you can say that, you know, they were energized. It was Kyrie Irving's debut. It was a little pep in their step. But the Clippers are the home team. Coming off a road trip to us, the fans... Got to come out with a little urgency. But they didn't really. And Reggie Bullock was left open for a couple of threes. And he hit five threes in the first quarter. And that was the story of the game for Dallas. I was thinking they were going to eventually cool down from three. But they really didn't. Shot 50% from three in the game. 48.6%. Close enough. 17 for 35 And those three-point attempts were created by Kyrie Irving. Obviously, his ability to make him off the bounce. But Tim Hardaway Jr. also was hitting contested threes like it was the first couple games of the 2021 playoffs. But most of the time, it was Kyrie Irving creating it with dribble penetration or he was double-teamed, straight double-teamed like we were doing in the second half. But the Clippers were down 16 after one, allowed 41 points to the Mavericks. And to me, that's just kind of unacceptable. 
for a team with championship aspirations. And the reason why you, you can say all you want, it's one game. How many times have you heard me say this this season? We're now playing pretty good basketball. We're nine out of the last 10 games. I'm sorry. Eight out of the last nine games with Paul George and Kawhi. We could make it nine out of 10. Kyrie Irving is a great player, but no Luka Doncic. We have two stars to their one, but we just didn't come out as sharp as they did. And Marcus Morris, I mean, he had an absolute tough one, to say the least. One for eight from the field. And, you know, was very average defensively in this game. I think he's been better since he came back from the rib contusion than what he was playing like before he got injured defensively. But tonight, no, not much. There was one play where I was really angry at the game. Reggie Bullock had hit like four threes already. And I think he was guarding him and was helping off of him for a second in the pick and roll. And as he was recovering, he just didn't make, didn't, didn't see the player at all. He, he was just ball watching. Reggie Bullock got open for a three. It's like when a player has four threes, it, it's exactly what I said last game. When a player has four threes, as a team, you should have more pride. This guy's not going to get another open three. He's going to have to hit a contestant one with me with a hand in his face. And Reggie Bullock's not hitting those shots. It's just that attention to detail, that urgency. I think the Clippers have really been poor in first quarters to start the season. I think that's really hurt them. And then the crazy part is, you know, they're a good enough team. And Norman Powell and Terrence Mann carrying the show keeps the Clippers in the game. And they play well in the second and third quarter overall, I guess. Outplay the Mavs. Paul George and Kawhi had good moments in there. For Kawhi, it was really all the third quarter. He was a ghost in the first half. And I got to give credit to Josh Green, who's going to be the new guy that's guarding Kawhi now that Dorian Finney-Smith is gone. And he played amazing in the first test. Absolutely. On both ends of the floor. I was very impressed with him. But still, this is Kawhi Leonard. That's no excuse. You know, he's not going to be able to blow by very many guys. On this team, Bullock, Josh Green, good defenders. Even Dwight Powell was switched on to Kawhi at one point, and Kawhi couldn't get by him. He took a contested 18-footer. The Mavs were switching all the ball screens, and even a lot of off-ball screens. And most of the time, the Clippers were going at Kyrie throughout the game. It was stagnant ball. It was a heavy dose of, you know, Paul George mid-ranges and turnarounds, and there was even some mid-post PG, but he wasn't doing as well tonight. Or on Wednesday night. It's tough because the Clippers just don't get to the basket enough. Norman Powell does, though, and Terrence Mann does. And that's part of the reason why they got their points. 21 for Terrence Mann. 24 for Norman Powell. They were the Clippers' two leading scorers, not Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. And that's a problem. That's a problem. In the fourth quarter... The Clippers were going only down three going into the fourth quarter. How can they be, you know, over and over again, go so cold in these fourth quarters? And Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, I just don't think enough. They haven't taken it over games in the fourth quarter enough this season, in my opinion. And maybe there's got to be a change in the rotations in the way they're being substituted. I mean, there was a stretch in the first quarter. So Ty Lue, by the way, in these two straight games, this one and the last one, not staggering Kawhi and Paul George anymore. He took both of them out again in the first quarter with like three minutes left. And there was a lineup with three guards again, back to the three guards set. They put in Musa Diabate for a second and took him out within like a minute or two. And then went small with Robert Covington at center, Nico Batum at the four, and then Kennard, Norman Powell, and Reggie. And Reggie was same old Reggie. I mean, I think he shot efficiently three for five. But his defense is no good. Careless turnovers, two of them. It's just, it's just the same old, same old. It's just there's not enough athleticism, youth, energy in the team. 
It's an older, slower team that looked a little gassed tonight. And how often do we say they look gassed in fourth quarters? It took them till the under two minutes left in the game to score 20 points in that fourth quarter. They ended with 26 points in the fourth, but a lot of that was in garbage time. And credit to the Mavs, you know, they did not let the Clippers take the lead. I don't think we ever took the lead. We got within one. But the fourth quarter, the Clippers, you know, I got to give the Mavs credit. Theo Pinson made some one ridiculous step back three. But Nico Batum also got hurt, jammed his finger on a dunk attempt. And he only played 15 minutes in the game. And that absolutely hurt the Clippers because even though he was 0 for 3, he was taking charges, playing good D. He's just, we already know what Nico does. But the first quarter and the fourth quarter are challenges right now for the Clippers. When it comes to first quarters, I think it's just an attention to detail thing. You got to come out and be sharper defensively. I think that's where it starts. I think it's also just a little bit of coincidence, personally, that teams just have happened to hit more threes to start games against the Clippers this season. And the Clippers, maybe as a team, take a little longer to get their jumpers going. But that being said, defensively, they need to lock in more to start games. And in the fourth quarter, their legs really seem to seem to get tired. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's a star's league when it comes to closing. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George aren't creating good looks for everybody else because they don't get to the basket enough. And the fact that both of the Clippers' best two players have that issue is part of why it just becomes isolation and contested mid-ranges. And they got to hit those shots. Isn't that supposed to be their bread and butter? It's an interesting conversation that we're going to have to continue. After we talk about FanDuel, FanDuel is the new sports betting partner for Locked On, and that's because they're the number one sportsbook in America. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl, Super Bowl party is FanDuel, and I am excited for the game. Philadelphia, Kansas City. Just download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. I honestly can't tell you what bets I would make for this weekend. It is too unpredictable. I'm going to leave that to you. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly with FanDuel. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. One thing that was good about the Clippers in this game they created a lot of turnovers for the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavs turned the ball over 18 times, Clippers 11. So they'll take that. My problem is this. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard straight up need to be better. They need to be better. They can't both have dud games like this on the same night. Paul George had 20 points. Kawhi Leonard had 18 points. Kyrie Irving at 24, more points than either of them. The Clippers' leading scorers are Norman Powell and Terrence Mann. I mean, look, I know they were double-teaming Kawhi here and there, but he was 7 for 12 in the game. You can't tell me that the Clippers' best player should only be taking 12 shots. He needs to be more aggressive. We need to run more plays to get him involved more than anybody. I truly do believe that Kawhi Leonard is still a rhythm guy that you need to get the ball throughout games. I don't think he's the type of guy that you cannot get him that many shots and then all of a sudden late in the games he's going to take over. I think you've got to get him in rhythm throughout the game. Paul George, you know, I like that he takes he took 20 shots because I always say that I think Paul George should take 20 shots or more. But I'm going to be honest I think that when Kawhi, I think that I feel like I usually say that when Kawhi Leonard doesn't play. Because when Kawhi Leonard plays, I want Kawhi taking 20 shots. And I want PG taking like 15 to anywhere between 15 to 20. And if he's hotter than Kawhi, by all means, take more than 20. But in a game like this where neither of them really have it going, and I think Paul George, you know, he did have a stretch. I want to say it was the second quarter where he was cooking. It was the second quarter. He had some really nice step backs, and it was he was going at Reggie Bullock a lot. 
But I want to say Reggie Bullock and Josh Green, like, honestly did a good job overall with Kawhi and Paul George. They held their own. And Kawhi Leonard usually destroys the Mavericks. So I got to give them some credit, too. We got to give them a fair shake. The Clippers did look a little tired, I will say. But I don't want to use that as an excuse because, in my opinion, I've made a lot of little excuses for them this season. I think this is a game they should have won. I think this is a game they should be winning. And I think that these are games that bite you in the butt come seeding. And there's a lot of changes happening in the West right now. And the Clippers really can't afford to lose these kind of games straight up because they do have a fairly tough schedule for the rest of the season or upcoming, even though they don't have a back-to-back for the remainder of the month. But moral of the story, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George need to be better on a consistent basis. And Kawhi Leonard needs to be our go-to number one clear cut end of story. I know, you know, the game has its way of dictating who gets those kind of shots just naturally. But come on. We can get the ball to Kawhi Leonard more. And I think that they'll make a an effort to do so in the next game because 12 shots when you're shooting 7 for 12 is just not enough. And Paul George and Kawhi Leonard as well in terms of the fourth quarter, they need to be better as stars. They need to be better as stars. And you know what? I honestly don't think they're going to have the ability to just get to the basket and create a bunch of open shots at the end of a game. I think Paul George may. Kawhi Leonard, no. I think he's going to have to rely on hitting those contested mid-ranges. And for the, for greats like Kawhi, that shot is his shot. It's a make-or-miss league. You know, it's about who makes the, those shots that they're used to making in the big moments. As for the other parts of the loss, I talked about the first quarter. I think... Kawhi Leonard and Paul George need to be staggered. I don't think that both of them should go to the bench, especially if we're going to the three-guard lineup. So I also want to say the Clippers didn't do very well in that in those minutes either. Christian Wood, I remember vividly, coming down the court, cross-matched with Luke Kennard, just took him to the house for a layup. It's just... And Luke Kennard, I have to say, I don't remember him shooting more than one shot. Yeah, he shot once. He played six minutes in the first half, and he wasn't having a good defensive night. They were kind of going at him. I remember Kyrie blowing by him, which, I mean, that's, I know it's Kyrie Irving, but point is, Luke Kennard, they knew, yo, this guy can't really guard like that. And yeah, Luke has made his strides defensively, but right now his confidence is low in general. He shot one shot, I'm pretty sure it was like a mid-range, and it was a bad miss. And I'm a little concerned about Luke. I think his confidence is really wavering. I think that Ty... You know, doing this thing where, like, with Rocco and him, where he'll play him in the first half. He doesn't like what he sees, and then he doesn't even play him at all in the second half. But then Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris have a leash from Staples Center to the Honda Center. It's in, it's just really, in my opinion, unfair. It's really unfair, and I don't believe that that's best for the team. I have to say, I'm really disappointed in the way Ty Lue has, you know, picked certain favorites this season. And I just, I went to bat for him so much as a fan. And I just think that the reason why I was so confident about the Clippers being amazing this season was because I figured that he would always do what was best. And I think he's been phenomenal the first two years with the team. I really do. And I don't think this means he's a bad coach. But he's really not had a good season, in my opinion. He's been a big reason why the Clippers have underachieved. I don't think he's maximized the roster for what it is. And I think he's been unfair, as I've said. And I think Luke Kennard, I just hope he can get his confidence back. As for everyone else, you know, I was happy to see Robert Covington play more in this game. He played 12 minutes. He was one for five, though, from the field, one for four from three. But I didn't really have much of a problem with his shot selection. And I like Robert Covington being out there, honestly, point blank, end of story. And he's rusty, too. It's not like he's used to he's, – he's not getting consistent minutes. And I do think the Nicholas Batum injury did hurt the Clippers, absolutely, you know, both ends of the floor. 
But one thing, Terrence Mann was knocking down his open shots, getting to the basket. Norman Powell getting to the basket, knocking down threes. Those two guys did their parts. I have nothing bad to say about them, their performances. They continue to be great. If it's a Zubats, you know, 29 minutes of play, 9 points, 10 rebounds, 2 blocks on 3-for-3 three three shooting. You know, I think we got to feature him a lot more. 29 minutes played. I think he should play over 30 minutes as well. There was one point of the game where I forgot that Zoo was even on our team in this game tonight. I, I'm being or Wednesday night. I'm being serious. I was at the game and I forgot Zoo was even around. I was like, oh man. <laughs> Zoo has just been so, in my opinion, overall consistently there. And I really admire that about him. And I always think that he gives his best. He always gives his best. Even if he doesn't have great, you know, he has some games where he looks amazing, some games where he looks terrible, but he always gives his best. It's tough because I don't think we even put Zoo in a lot of ball screens, in a lot of pick and roll action tonight offensively. I don't think we had Zoo. We, had, we went for a lot more small, smaller wings setting the screen so we could get Kyrie Irving switched on to Paul and Kawhi. And I think Kyrie Irving actually was really trying hard defensively trying to body up, and he even stripped Paul George once. But I think moral of the story, the stars weren't good enough. That's not enough points. Kawhi Leonard should be shooting more than Paul George. And Nicholas Batum getting hurt didn't help. And in my opinion, Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris, I think I'm just going to save it for what the Clippers need to do for the trade deadline. The NBA trade deadline is approaching, and Locked On has you covered. Thursday, February 9th, tune in to Locked On NBA on YouTube at 2 Eastern time to hear reaction from the trades that will change the rest of the NBA season. Who becomes contenders and who is taking for a better future? Subscribe to Locked On NBA on YouTube and don't miss a deal. Okay, what should the Clippers do on or in the trade deadline. Well, I am here to report that Kevin Durant has been traded to the Phoenix Suns for Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, four first round picks. Now we have a new threat alongside the Denver Nuggets and I say I said the Warriors and the Nuggets were the only threats for the Clippers to me when healthy. Now we got another one. And the Lakers also made a phenomenal trade. If they can sneak into the play, and I think they have a shot as well. It's tough, Clipper Nation. It's tough. The window seems to be getting smaller. The Clippers are not showing signs of a championship team. You can say that they've won nine out of their last, I'm sorry, eight out of their last 10 with Kawhi and Paul George. But how many of those wins were that impressive? How many of those wins were really that impressive? How many of them did they play great basketball? We keep saying a win is a win, but we keep saying that because they don't get impressive wins. They don't dominate teams. They don't consistently put put up great performances. We need to get some youth. We need to get some athleticism. We need to get some higher IQ players, and we need to trim off some dead weight. And I'm sorry to say, but I, I believe that tonight, just looking at it, the, the lack of intangibles, the questionable decisions, the inconsistent performances, the lack of their ability to contribute when their shot's not falling. Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris, two guys that have been just fantastic for the Clippers overall, in my opinion. In my opinion, I know some would disagree. They were both traded. Or picked up, I should say. Reggie Jackson was picked up. Marcus Morris was traded. In the middle of the 2019-20 season, they are part of the 2021 run, which I think is why they get so much love and people are so hesitant to say negative things or want to see them go. But I believe that they're... I don't think it's their fault, personally. I think Ty Lue's over-infatuation with them and them playing more than certain guys that are more athletic, better defenders fit more with Kawhi and Paul George on the court and make smarter decisions for that matter, should be playing more. 
And I think Ty Lu this season has really put them in positions to fail and just look bad more often than not. And I think that he needs to be saved from himself and they need to be traded for that reason. Or just, they got to get him out of here. I don't want to say it like that because I really love both of them, especially Reggie Jackson. But if do you want me to list the basketball reasons? I don't want to like seem like I'm trashing these guys that I care for so much as players. And I really wish the best for them as people as well, sincerely. I've never met either of them. I just dapped them up at games. Never met either, but, you know, I really, really, really like Marcus Morris and Reggie Jackson. But I think that Ty Lue plays them too much. The Clippers need to get a backup big, a serviceable one. Doesn't matter if it's a Mason Plumlee, bring Isaiah Hartenstein back. Anyone decent that's decent defending in the pick and roll. Simple as. As far as the point guard thing, look, Russell Westbrook with his Laker trade, they got D'Angelo Russell, which I think is a good move for them. But Russell Westbrook, yes, I think the Lakers situation was really bad for him. Chris Haynes reported that the Clippers could be interested in picking him up if he's bought out by Utah. And considering Russell Westbrook's history with Utah Jazz fans, I could assure you he will not be suiting up for that franchise. So Russell Westbrook could be a real option for us. I totally think it's a mistake. What have you not learned from Rondo and John Wall? Point guards that are not great without the ball, very good playmakers in their heyday, but are not respected scoring the ball enough that they create enough advantages for you in the half court. The Clippers are a half court team, and even though Russ would be brought for the same reasons they wanted to bring in John Wall to push the pace, to put Kawhi and Paul in the right positions to succeed, teams sag off on Russ. I watch Laker games. They sag off on Russ. They go under screens, and Russ takes three-pointers like he's a good three-point shooter, and then he makes questionable decisions at the end of games. And I really like Russell Westbrook. I actually, he's one of my favorite players I've watched in my life. He's not what the Clippers need. If the Clippers can snag Fred Van Vliet and not give up Batum or Terrence Mann, and obviously Paul George and Kawhi, it, that, and I'm including Norman Powell in that, then it is what it is. Anyone else should be on the table. But Terrence Mann and Nico, no. Because we need the guys that can guard. If no point guard means giving up, you have to give up a guy that can guard to get a point guard, I don't think we should do it. I really don't. We need a backup big man and to trim off some of the dead weight because that way people need to start playing every game and knowing that they're playing every game. I truly believe that. Robert Covington and Luke Kennard especially. Terrence Mann, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Nico Batum, and Zoo. Those players should be our starting five. I think that's a very good starting five. Norman Powell and Luke Kennard alongside a stagger, Paul George or Kawhi are always in the game, alongside you know Norman Powell, Luke Kennard, are the guys that come off the bench, alongside Robert Covington and a backup big that the Clippers go out and get. That would be my nine-man rotation. Brandon Boston, Amir Coffey, whenever someone's out. Simple as that. Simple as that. <laughs> but there you go. It's going to be a really crazy trade deadline. I hope the Clippers don't do something crazy. I don't think they need to go insane just because the Suns got Kevin Durant and the Lakers, you know, got Jared Vanderbilt, who I know one of my Clipper fans in the comments. And that reminds me, I want to ask an honest question for the YouTube comments on Locked on Clippers. Do you think Paul George can really be the second best player on a championship team? I know that's a really, really, you know, a question that has such divided opinion. Let me know in the comments. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to Locked On Clippers and turn on the, turn on the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video. Moral of the story, Clipper Nation. Clippers need to be better to start games. More urgency, especially on defense. No three guard lineups ever. And when I say that doesn't include Terrence when I say that. I mean Reggie, Kennard, Wall. I don't I shouldn't say John Wall, but Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard, and Norman Powell. I don't think they should ever play all at once. Less Marcus Morris, or should I say Senior and Reggie, I think should be traded. Because Ty Lue. 
has not been able to save himself this season because he's put them in positions to play too much over guys that, in my opinion, are better defenders and better fits next to Kawhi and Paul. Clippers need to do something. This roster is not a championship roster right now. I'm sorry to break it to you. And I, I'm sorry to break it to myself, in fact. But it is what it is, right? The Clippers, 31-27 and 27 now. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a battle. But we'll see what happens on Thursday. Going to be doing an episode for Friday based on what happens at the trade deadline. Hopefully the Clippers do something good. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers. Thanks for making Locked On Clippers your first listen today. Now make your second listen, Game to Game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local, local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Go Clippers.